is going on, folks? We are live. More from Metacast here. Talking to Ultraman Gaia, pushing that Ultraman agenda. How's it going, Prime? Uh, guten Tag, mine dudes. Konnichiwa, Fraud Lines, and what it do, what it do. Yeah, you know, we figured, you know, after two episodes of us really talking about the state of Power Rangers, you know, we got to kind of liven it up a bit. And, you know, get back to Ultraman Gaia, you know, which is the... You could say the sort of sequel to Ultraman Dia, Dina and Tiga in a way. Um, it takes place in its own continuity, mm-hmm. um, but it's considered a trilogy with the three of them because they all came out and they were the the shot in the arm that revitalized the Ultraman franchise as we see it now. Yeah. Um, so with that, before we get into that, uh, we, we got some news and stuff as we always do. Uh, first off, small house cleaning. Um, we're definitely gonna do an episode on Cosmic Fury because there's there's definitely a lot to talk about. Um, I told Ro we can get him on for that episode because um, I, I feel people and me and Prime had just before we even I hit record we had just talked about like you know the state of comic books and certain writers and how you know it's not the character's fault it's the writers right and one of the things watching cosmic fury and stuff that really highlighted is like how there's this thing of the people that are in charge ignoring other seasons and stuff and the only argument i've seen people say is oh well it's just you know people don't really care about those other seasons i'm like that's bullshit because you can only care about those seasons if the people behind the property actually properly push those other seasons and bring awareness to them so and so then my thing about behind that is that when people say that people don't care about those other seasons, okay, but you are writing an entry in a long standing continuity. And that's the one thing that Power Rangers is known for. Like all of these shows are interconnected and you have to know that interconnection of how that affects the universe as you are moving and pushing forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew we were in for some shit when they kept saying that Cosmic Fury was the first season since Mighty Morphin to carry the same cast from the next season. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. If you ignore Zeo, if mm-hmm. you ignore Turbo, and if you're ignoring space, then yes, you are correct. That is, you are technically you right. Even Galaxy to a degree. I would have saying, then there were elements. to a degree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Alpha, yeah, you know what, you're right. Alpha and Decca are cast members. Al- Alpha is a cast member. You are correct. You are correct. Skull, um, well, Bulk is, and the Professor. Bulk- you know what? You know what? You you added another one, so there you go. There you go. So if you <laughs> if you ignore those shows, then yes, you get your your asterisk hashtag first. Um, congratulations. I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and that and the thing of it is, it's it's one of the things that we talked about once once and always was like the stakes and the high point, which we'll delve into when we do the Cosmic Fury episode. But just like if we're really if Cosmic Fury is really supposed to be this big celebration of Power Rangers, like as a show. As it being a continuing story from Down to Fury, it's fine. As a show that is continuing for this this celebration of Power Rangers, it's lacking severely, and you see it up front. You you are not the first person I heard to say that. People who are talking honestly, people people who aren't like just slobbing on the show's knob, like everyone I like, even the people who liked it, even people who didn't like it, they all said the same thing. Um, as a continuation from Down to Fury, perfectly fine as this epic conclusion to power rangers that y'all are saying it is y- you fucking blew it like i don't like i don't even care about like oh if it was eric from time force he would have put zen in the blender yeah you're 100 percent right i'm not even asking for that it's just like bro if you're gonna tell me that there's this big universe spanning thing and zed's out there like yo you could put a motherfucker you said it even in once and all you could put a fool in a fucking might speed rescue suit and have them fighting somebody and we would at least got something that's like all right cool Cool. Fine. Show. Got you. Show don't tell. Show don't tell. Yeah. Like, do you remember watching Countdown to Destruction when they said that it was the an, the uh, United Alliance of Evils, full of salt in the galaxy, and they did cutaways and showed other Power Rangers fighting against the fucking army for like limited, a couple of seconds. Limited as they had, they had the Aquatician Rangers getting their ass whooped by one group. They had, they had the Blue the, 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 and Phantom Ranger. Phantom Ranger getting worked, and I was like, all right, cool. That's all I need to know. We didn't have any other Rangers at that point, but it was still like you got something of like. They all right, showed cool. something. They showed. So that's that's just that's all we that's, that's, that's all, all we asked that's, for, CJ. Just something. Just, just something. So you know, I don't want to delve into it, but like. You know, and now there's rumors of um, the people behind the Witcher being a part of the Power Rangers. And look, 
as much as like as how much do you hate your franchise <laughs> wow as, okay. as much as i enjoy the witcher it's kind of one of those situations where it's like i'm of two minds on one hand i can understand people that never played the games or book and read the books that still enjoy the, the netflix show fine i get it but i can also understand the other side of it where people that are fans of the games and the books and stuff they are looking at the netflix show like hold on something's off here you know and I think that's that's the issue, but I don't think you're going to get that with this Power Ranger show because I think the issue that's going to come up is they're so they're so trying to find lightning in a bottle of MNPR, and it's like you're kind of missing the point of why this franchise works. And if you're so focused on trying to do that continuing, keeping the same characters thing, there's a reason why people kind of got tired of Power Rangers after the first three seasons because it's like, oh, they're in the same suits. All right, cool. And then third season, people were just like, okay, what the fuck? And then boom, that's why Zio revitalized the franchise because you put him in different suits. You changed up the character dynamics. And that's what made the show great is because you changed up the character dynamics. Right. And I also feel like this is a thing I said a lot. I think I said it before on the show. It's like one of the things I really like about Sentai and Kamen Rider is the fact that it renews itself because I feel like that takes a lot of creative bravery to go like, okay, we had we just had this really successful show. People like these characters. People like these casts. We got this soundtrack motifs. We got all these sets, all these suits, all of these you know great monster designs and all that shit. Cool. Throw all that out. We start over from scratch. Brand new show. Let's go. And I think that also the biggest thing about those shows too that people forget is that when they do the Super Sentai rollouts, those shows get you know forty plus episodes. They get a couple of handful of movies. They get, they get the crossovers with the pre they get crossovers, crossover previous seasons and future seasons. They get the little stage o shows. OVA stage shows, everything. So right. it, keep, it still keeps people's eyes on the product. And if I'm looking at American companies, I'm like, well, if you want people to still remember, your, if your whole concern is we don't want to switch every year because people are going to forget that. Okay, well, you can do that by literally just promoting the shows in that capacity. And still do your new seasons and still do a crossover or the 10 years, even the 10 years later thing is like the greatest shit ever. Right. Personally. Right. Or or you can do some of the shit that they do at Ultraman and just have the characters just like routinely just pop the fuck up. Like, yeah, just because have to have an answer. <laughs> like, like there's a random ass episode of fucking Ultraman Ace where Zofi just drops down from the sky and just helps him fight some ant monsters. Like just 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 cause. Just cause. I thought one of the greatest things ever was uh was was and again this is one of those things i at least give comments cosmic fury and it's a good basis billy pops up in the first episode helping with the cosmic rangers and i was like that's actually pretty dope he's he's there helping that that's all you need is those kind of just random like i don't care that billy's here i just like the fact that he's there cool i'm fine right that works right exactly or shit like they do um like just recently like fucking um in King Andre, they just had the Q Q Oldra just just show up. Why? Yeah, yeah, why, the, why, not? why the fuck not? Just why not? <laughs> so yeah, what, yeah. Who gonna stop us? We in charge. Like we were saying, like yeah, it's it's you the know. you know, like I said, I don't want to get into it, but I would say in lighter news, if we want to talk revamps, uh, Prime get, get, guess what's coming back, and, and this is one of those situations where I I was like, you know what, I really need to get get into this. Um, Garu is coming back. Yeah, I saw the fucking hype, man. Um, I need to get into Garo. Like I like I think I said before, like I tried to watch the first season and um it wasn't the show that turned me off, it was the people I was watching it with that kind of turned me off because they were like, Oh, this is way cooler than Otoku because it has um kids in it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I look they, like I, t I spoke to one of the guys that did the. I think there was the. Did he do what was it, the live action? Was it the anime of Garo? I believe it was that one of the older cons. He did that. He did the anime version of Garo that they did, and he again a voice actor that he wasn't familiar with Garo. He actually went out and actually watched the live action stuff that they did for the show, and he was really into it and stuff. And I was like, yo, that's actually pretty dope so to see that get a get, get come back i'm just like okay 
cool. I mean, do you, for in your opinion, do you see this as being something that could get people into the show proper? Because I don't know if Garo in his first run had like a huge fanfare compared to like Kamen Rider and some of the other shows. If I'm not mistaken, it was fairly popular, at least that first season. Like a lot of people were talking about it, it had buzz because it was something so different. Yeah. Uh, from Sentai and Kamen Rider and Ultraman at the time. Okay. Um, but. I mean, it's fairly popular because it had a lot of sequel series and movies and shit, and like you said, it got that anime. So, yeah, like, I was just kind of curious on if, if you know if this is going to be something that's going to really reinvigorate it and stuff, and in, in, in you know the general public's eyes that might still, you know, like if I'm not mistaken, like if if not the general public, I know for a fact the fans they've been thirsty for some new Garo. So, hey, that, that works. I mean, look, we we still thirsty for Metal Hero stuff. I'm I'm looking at you know B Fighter and all that, like. Are, going to get something else with that that'll be nice <laughs> yeah i'm waiting for a next another space squad movie that'll be that'll be great space sheriff can we get a new space sheriff that'd be great <laughs> i mean you can you can bring old boy back you know from og space sheriff again i'm pretty sure he'd be game for it um i don't know the knees might be knocking out a little, a little old now i don't know <laughs> hey look man <laughs> hey old boys like rick flair man you can't keep him down that that dude will keep hey how much hey you want me back cool bet i'll, I'll come back <laughs> just put me in the suit again I mean, we'll see. He probably can't be doing his own stunts anymore, you know. Oh, hell no. I ain't saying he got to do his own stunts, no. I'm just saying, like, you want to put him in the – look, do like a um, fucking overhead in, in the go Kaiju thing where he's in that full suit as, like, the captain of, you know, that whole old Rangers thing. I'm like, he ain't in the suit, but he's still kicking ass, you know. I mean, he already is. He was in the Gavin, the uh, Gavin Type G movie. He was the, the – he took over his – um. Oh, yeah, that's right. For his show. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, so just put him in that capacity. Be good, you know. Um – so apparently, uh, <laughs> Kamen Rider Legend is a thing. Yes. Did uh, you see on. it's going to be a, a YouTube show? And the crazier part about it is we've known what this motherfucker has looked like for months because there was that leaked picture that came out that said, like, this is what he looks like. And we all thought it was like just some really good fan art. And I was like, there's no way he's going to look like that. Apparently, uh, as you see in this poster here, uh, he's looking a little like the Destroyer Worlds uh, decade. And I'm like, is there a connection? Well, we'll Cause, see cause, somewhere. Because, you know, two Kaiser had that connection to Gokaiser, you know, and right. I'm like, mm, what if he has right. a connection? That'd be dope. I, look. Somewhere. Somewhere Narutaki's doing the Arthur Fist. <laughs> It's like, am I a joke to you? <laughs> but like, Honore, another decado. Honore, <laughs> legend. It's like, I will never forgive him for that. <laughs> um, so we had that. Um, you know, complete selection modification. They want to come out of our pockets again, as they always do, because, you know, us adult people got a lot of adult money. Um, we're getting the Genesis driver. I only got um, so much Bandai. I only got. So thank much. you. I, look, man. Look, that that PayPal and four is a motherfucker, ain't it? <laughs> I'm gonna say like it's been, it's been eating my ass alive, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm about to move soon, and I'm like, my, my fiance is gonna whoop my ass. If she's <laughs> like again, Chris. What is this? Like you would not understand. You would never understand. No combo on my wallet, <laughs> beating it the fuck up. Look, man, Perfect people, brain parries. Huh. Look, I saw this shit and I was like, I don't need it, but my wallet is like, Chris, you know you want it. You know they want it, right? You know, PayPal and four, Chris. Come on. You know, you can afford it, please. <laughs> All right. And I'm like looking, I'm looking right now at my, my belt shelf and I'm like, damn, do I have the room for this shit? Bro, you because <laughs> I'm looking at it right now, like, can I put it up there? Is it possible I can do that? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Cause I still gotta get the Kabuto belt, and I'm still gonna get the uh, Gachar driver, man. Dude, I feel my problem is like when kids come into my life, they're gonna look at that like I want to play with this, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> they got way options. The, <laughs> I give the DX yeah. one. It's like here, here, right. play with the DX son. Play with that one. <laughs> you play with this one, nah, not nah, this one, baby. No, this one, this one, this one for daddy. <laughs> it's on the it's on the shelf for a reason. You know, when you're older, well, maybe you can cosplay as it, but. You know, not now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, man, ten years for camera to guy. Damn, why are we so old, CJ? I don't know, man. I, look, it, look, man. I, I felt old when I saw the hurricane. Was it twenty years later? Oh my gosh! I was like, holy shit! <laughs> Shut up! Shut the hell up! God, I was damn. like, 
I know, right? And, and look, I didn't even watch Hurricane Joe until like a couple of years after it came out online. I was like, wow, like 20 years later, Jesus, like what the fuck, man? <laughs> um, another another pocket buster of the the, the, the Gobble Revolver uh, Memorial Edition. Um, yeah, that's that's. I don't need it. I already said I'm stopping. I got the Gokai. Look, if they come out the Gokai just silver weapon, I'll buy that. But like, I'm like, nah, I can't. I stayed away from from the Alpha Ranger Morpher, and I did good on that. This, I'm like, I mean, I got the DX one. Do I really need this? <laughs> I mean, it looks nice. It does. Looks very nice. It does. It looks like it's a little bit more details for sure. Mm-hmm. As these cuz all these memorial editions are is they're very much like higher scale, a little bit more details on the weapons in the DX, but I mean it's like this to me. I would say this, the the Gokaiger weapons to me were definitely a huge step up from their DX counterparts for sure cuz they're very life size, true to the show kind of thing. I would say in this one, do you really need this one compared to the DX one? That's up to you. I feel I that's, say, yeah, that's- that's preference, and I would say I would probably more lean towards this one. Yeah, I know. Yeah, trust me, I, I would do. I, I would say if you really, if your pockets are really hurting and stuff, you know, hey, if you got the DX one, cool. If if you can, if you can swing it, then sure, get this one. Um, I think this one comes with that and these three, uh, three ones, and it has uh, different background music for each one, which cool <laughs> for sure. Oh, it should um, have. It should. It should. It should. It should. Now, does it only come with those three batteries, or doesn't it doesn't come with the complete team? When they did the announcement, they just said it was just those three batteries. It might be more, so this is just the initial announcement. Oh, so. is it um compatible with the old batteries? Do you know? I don't know. I gotta read up on it and stuff, but I would assume maybe because I mean, my the, I know for the Gokaiju Saber, I can still use the keys from the um from the old from the old ones with the with that. So I mean, oh okay, bet bet bet. So I'm presuming. You know that's that that's a thing and stuff. So, um, so Toy Fair happened um, recently, and um, I mean, look, I, not much on the scale here because you know, again, as, as we said earlier, uh, they had this to show off. They had obviously the uh, Pop Funkos of the MPR Rangers, which that's a given, which cool. Um, they also had the one, what is it, one sixth uh, inch uh, figures the, for Zio. Which looks pretty dope. I like. Um, and they had the MMPR ones, obviously, because it's MMPR. I mean, I do like them. They look dope. I don't, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna go out my way to buy them or anything, but you know, it, it looks it looks dope enough. Um, but yeah, not much. Like I said, as we know with Power Rangers right now, with them, there wasn't really much to show off and stuff. Um, I know with you, Prime, um, you you got the Master Morpher. You know, you want to give people a quick hit on the master morpher and the the highs and lows <laughs> so to speak yeah, can, can you still see it in my oh being covered up on my drink can you still see it in the background there all right so yeah yeah uh, yeah it came in my you know it's fine mm-hmm. um i would say that as far as um comparison i would say that i like the bandai legacy ones a little more um in terms of like the weight the feel because of the die cast metal and i wish oh, this yeah. was die cast now this looks like the morpher on the show because of the vacuum chrome metal they did uh, not not chrome metal but the vacuum <laughs> yeah. paint that they did on it yeah. it looks yeah. good mm-hmm. uh the coins look fantastic um i didn't have any major quality control issues on mine because there were some horror stories of people saying that your coin was all fucked up or they had like multiples of the same coin that's the about right i had yeah <laughs> That's about that's about hash bro quality we expect at this moment. Exactly. Um, the only major issue that I had was that my battery cover screw was um was stripped, so I had uh-huh. to work a little extra hard to get it off. And I but I, I got it off and I got the batteries in. Okay. And um, I'm gonna say when I put the batteries in and I you know tried out the, the sound effects, I'm gonna be real honest with y'all. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drop kayfabe for a minute here. Um hearing his voice and then knowing what he had to go through to get this thing made um and how much he wanted it to be made for the fans it kind of like i got a little emotional um it kinda, look i'm in the same boat know? i'm in the same boat now like, maybe not crying but just like you know you know what, you know what? I, it's, it's one of those things where and i don't know if you agree with me it's one of those things where you start 
fully understanding JDS passion for Power Rangers and what he felt the franchise could be in like as much as I disagree right. with how he worded it at times because mm-hmm. it did in bold like when he's like it needs to be dark and I was like okay I get what you're saying words have meanings but I get it because you're passionate you start sitting back like maybe he should have just been the guy that kind of like they should go to as the as the sort of temperature check on what the franchise could really go in a direction of in a way right like and like we say, like, well, he was very passionate and like you can tell he gave a fuck. And like I said, like just hearing his voice, hearing some new phrases. Now, some of the phrases are fucking questionable. And I wish that <laughs> whoever from Hashbro wrote the script actually wrote some lines from the actual fucking show for him to say. But, you know, let me stop. Prime, you're asking a lot out of that company that has shown Hash- themselves to not care. Or at least Hash- I'm not going to say they don't care. They have the best of intentions, but it is hitting. Like it should be, like a company should. You're work. giving them a whole lot more credit than I would. And um, one of the folks I follow on Twitter, they 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 were really bothered by this. They were like, the fact that he doesn't he doesn't say in this coin, um, the Dino Thunder coin, that he doesn't say Dino Thunder power up, the most basic thing, it's the easy. most basic phrase that you could say, he doesn't. He says two variations of a uh, Dino Thunder Black Ranger though. He says two variations of that. But the fact that he doesn't have that morphin call, that's it's like I want to praise them, I want to give them praise, but like <laughs> they take like you just I just can't because there's always something with hash, bro. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you just can't you just can't 100 percent this was good because it's always this is good, and there's always a but behind two it steps forward, just, five steps back. <laughs> they just can't help but doing dumb shit. Like they are the most bro company I've ever seen in my fucking <laughs> life, man. And it's not even you know what it is. It's like, like for instance, I, I don't think we've, we talked about it like that, but it was like when you look at Bandai, right? Like our issues with Bandai was just the small shit like, hey, Bandai, you know, if you're going to put out MMPR, can, you, can we get the weapons with the Rangers and right. stuff? Like, it, like it was that why shit. Why do all the Rangers look like Roy monsters? Like it was kind yeah, of shit was, like that. It was you silly know? shit where it's like, but the figures are pretty good, so what the fuck? Like we could the figures were in store, CJ. We could, yeah, buy, yeah. we could walk through a store and buy the fucking figures. The QA issues wasn't wasn't at an all time high compared to the Lightning Collection. It was just like, like all right, great. fine, fucking cool, Scott, like, man. Like, 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 like again, we I can roll my eyes and oh, you reissue them with the weapons. All right, all right, all right, all right, Bandai, fine. That, that's but, Bandai but, shit, but, but fuck but, it, whatever. They were the same price. Yeah. They weren't charged. They didn't upcharge you fifteen fucking dollars for some clear plastic uh flame effects that I don't want. I'm not gonna do- fuck off. I don't want these. I didn't ask for this. Like, I, it, I get the novelty of it. Effect parts, cool. If you if you're a photographer and you do toy, fi- that's great. I think that for your display, like- that's dope. But I don't need that. Like, I would rather have the option to buy that separately, like Bandai does. Yeah. Like if I want the effects parts, I can go buy them. Yeah, they do that for uh, not, Gumpla, where you where you get the effects Gumpla, parts separately, and it's like ten bucks uh, or five bucks or whatever. Dragon Ball Z, um, which are standard, some Ultraman shit. Like you know, you don't have to like you know, if that's if that's tacking on extra price for my fucking figure, I'd rather you not do it. Yeah, but um, but yeah, the fact that you said it wasn't much QA. I mean, despite you know online saying otherwise, that's kind of a shocker. So, um, right. So. Yeah. If you can get it, because I know it's been sold out a couple of times, um, I would highly recommend it. Well, if you're a fan of Tommy, um, you will like this a lot because it, it means a lot to people who are fans of Tommy. Like me, the number one Tommy simple on the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I was at New York Comic Con this past weekend, and um, it was, you know, Power Rangers was definitely representing for sure and stuff. Um, Not by Hasbro, though, I know. Nah, nah, it was just more so, you know, you know, you know, the, the Ranger actors were definitely putting it. You know, it's crazy. Ranger actors put in more work promoting Power Rangers than the fucking actual company that owns it. That's that's ain't that a bitch. Say, God bless, God bless Kevin on Twitter because he was the he was the one carrying the torch keeping Power Ranger Month alive, bro. <laughs> I'm like, yo, because at this point I'm looking at Asbro like, hey Asbro, just go on ahead and put Karen Ashley and them on your fucking payroll, because at least they they will carry that fucking franchise and you I that's how I feel about Power Rangers. Like, it's a shame that the actors are the ones that's keeping people's like po- keeping Power Rangers alive more than anything else in the actual company. That like that's and I think you made a point that it's crazy how we haven't had a GI Joe cartoon in years. We had a couple, you know, we just had that Snake Eyes movie, which 
was just okay. Bombed. But at the Bombed. end of the day, they're still making hands over fists with the toys. And it's like, Hasbro, you can still do that with Power Rangers. So why the fuck are you not doing it? You know, and like you said, it's they did the shit on purpose. They do it. They're doing they this doing. shit on purpose. They know what they're doing. They knew exactly what the fuck they were doing. So, it, you know, it, it, you know, it is what it is. And stuff. It is wanna, what it is. I mean, it's I, so, I wanna, no, you don't want to. We can talk about this a little later. <laughs> so, you know. Um, oh, so Cleopatra, they came out with uh, verse three of Shino <laughs> I'm so fucking mad, bro. I already got. Look. Ah! That is so fucking like, bro. Bro, and yet that still doesn't top out Hasbro's fucking Q. <laughs> That's how fucked up it is. It's like Cleopatra is getting so much please cop, and it's like, yeah, I understand, but you know, it's still bad. I ain't gonna sit there and give them any passes and shit. It's still fucked up. It's like, bro, like, how did y'all, how did y'all fumble this how shit y'all so bad? Fuck it up this bad. And I'm so upset because, like, I, I, I put in my for my replacement disc, right? And I got the version <laughs> two, and I'm like, damn, if I had fucking waited, I could have got the God, actual shit. good version. <laughs> Motherfucker. So like I need to check the website because I, I want I do want that version. So I gotta yeah. like check the website and see if there's any ISBN differences when I go on like and see if I can buy it in the store. Cause goddamn man. Yeah, I'm glad I waited. I was like, yeah, now I can buy version three. Thank you. <laughs> That's like, what I get being a goddamn chump supporting this shit early, goddamn it. Well, you know, look, look, this is what happens when we as fans, we, we support the, the Ultraman agenda by hook or crook. And, you know, hey, you get burned sometimes. It happens. It happens to the best of us. Like, I, you know. Well, on the alternate note, did you see that Mill Creek is releasing that Ultra 7 55 anniversary um, Blu-ray set that will have a collection of some of the best episodes as well as Ultra 7's appearances and other Ultraman shows? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Looks pretty, pretty dope. I already pre-ordered it because I put my money where my mouth is. I said whenever they release, I'm gonna buy it. Yeah, and they are really testing my patience with that. <laughs> oh man, I look, man, I I will forever look. You know what pissed me off, bro? So I don't know if you saw this. My boy Charlie peeped it when I made a comment on IG about it. So they they released the uh, the um, the the, the Kamarider Troopers from Shin Kamarider in um, figure art form, right? Yes. And I commented, I was like, wow, these fucking Ultraman soldiers look dope. Been nice to fucking see that shit in the goddamn movie. And Charlie was like, bro, right? And I was like, thank you. Thank you. The toy looks dope as shit. And I'm like, I yeah. can't tell because the movie didn't show me shit. Right. What a cool looking design. I would have loved to have seen this in more detail. <laughs> Thanks, Anno. I was... Yeah. Look, am I gonna buy Shin Shin Kamen Rider on DVD? Sure, yes, but like that 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 is the forever sticky point for me. I'm like, man, the, the troopers look dope as shit, look dope as fuck. Like, damn, couldn't tell, like, couldn't tell. <laughs> we had to spend too much money on our uh, bootleg V3 with his AT field, you know. Come and see had to <laughs> Ultraman V3. Um... <laughs> Would you, hold on. Would you would you watch a Shin Kamen Rider V3? If he gets his boy back to help him. If he gets his boy back to help him, I'll be totally happy with that. If he doesn't, then mm, I'm, I'm going to be questioning myself when I put that credit card in to, to, to the Phantom event for it and, and buying it. It's going to be a begrudge buy. Like, all right, Arno. God damn it, you got me. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Just for me to go back and complain like Prime, you know what this motherfucker did? <laughs> I'm gonna be like, you know what? I think I'll I'll wait for the Amazon release on that one. <laughs> y'all be safe in the y'all be safe in those streets now. Prime go ahead and thump Batman thumbs up, bless up. <laughs> <laughs> Around the corner. Y'all got y'all it. Good now. Y'all, y'all got it? Okay. <laughs> bless up. Y'all got it. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> Keep protect your chin. Wear a scarf. Oh my god, man! I, look, all of us after after Shin Kamen Rider, we were like, so V three, huh? I was like, yeah, I know, right? I, I was supposed to be Kamen Rider Zero, but I was like, that's V three. What are we talking about? Here? Like, <laughs> I know V three when I see one. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, I mean, I guess Anna was like, they're not, they're not gonna let me back on the lot, so I got to put all this shit in now. 
It's like, we're not getting a sequel to this. Put all our chips out here. I'm like, all right, man. I'm just saying, like, don't tell me it's Kamen Rider Zero and it's fucking V3 in my face here. Like, come on. like. Well, no, no, no. It's not V3 because he's, a, he's a, it was a butterfly. It's an entirely different insect. V3 is a dragonfly, sir. Yeah, I know. But yeah, exactly. It's like, see, he's a butterfly. You see, not a dragonfly. Different yeah, butterfly, not a dragonfly. Total, total different insect. Total different insect. Different color scheme and everything. It's like how they try to sell us on the old boy being the uh, Green Ranger and the Boom Comics is those a new concept. I'm like, nigga, it's bad the son, Tommy. Like, the fuck you talking about here? Like, so did you see my post today when I was like, they know what I want, but they won't give it to me? <laughs> and so I was talking to somebody about that. Like, all right, for those who don't know, one one bug that's been up my ass is that Boom Studios has had the Power Ranger license for how many fucking years now? I'm at, I'm thinking four. If it's that. way more than four. I think it's more. I, I'm just saying four because I kind of just zoned out and forgot to be are honest. On, I'm like, are we on? I got, anyway, they've had this license for, they had it for a while. They had it for a minute. They had it for a minute. For a, for a minute, a while. right. And you mean to tell me we have not gotten a Titanus, a Titanus Ranger yet? I gotta look at fucking fan art to see that shit, but yet out of all like you said, the OC stuff, no Titanus Ranger. Not even like a that, that would have been that logically would have been the first fucking thing they would have done. And then my thing is like the more I think about it, the more I get angry because I'm like, you know what makes a whole lot of fucking sense, CJ? Is if you take your fucking Titanus Ranger, right? Mm -hmm. And you know the plot line they got with Grace and Matt with you know the military, the US government trying to have their own Power Ranger. Wouldn't it make a lot of sense that they've captured Titanus? They um experiment on them. They used him to create their own ranger. That's not the Bat in the Sun Green Ranger. It's an entirely original new suit, and that would have been their fucking ranger. And kinda then also like, you could uh, have kind of like Ryan and Titanium Ranger. Could it like let, let me let me cook? Let me cook. <laughs> <laughs> let me cook. So then they, they got their Titanus. They got their Titanus Ranger right. And you, then you also have like the metaphor with the titans and you know stealing fire from the gods, right? Right. You then also have you can also say that okay, well, um, you can also give them the excuse to have the space titanus because they had to maybe remove the head because titanus is a sentient zord, and so you're going to have that also be a reason that we got the the in space look for that reissue they did during in space. Uh -huh. Also, this could be laying down the groundwork for light speed. We're like, okay, so studying the titanus, titanus. Now, so we got some of the light speed swords. You could have fucking Miss Fairweather be one of the scientists who's working with uh Grace. And like, didn't that make didn't that automatically sound way more better than let's just do another Green Ranger? Because the Green <sighs> Ranger is popular. Yeah. Eh, eh, yeah. Yeah. You know, because when they when they had my man in the bat the sun thing, I was like, so we just so we just fucked the green candle, huh? Just just, just right, just that. you know, just just fuck just fuck that being Tommy's thing, you know. Just fuck off, man. I'm so <laughs> Like at this point, I'm like, they're they're almost finally getting to Zio at this point in the comics. But goddamn, like we had to wait how long to get to that point? Like my my man, I guarantee you, they'll if they if there is a way, they will find a way to have the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in the Zio Megazord. They will find, they will make that shit work. They will do it. Yep. I mean, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, we're finally coming to the coup de grace, which is uh, Ultraman Gaia. Um. This is a show that uh, I would say this is probably the first time they had uh, two Ultraman protagonists in the show. Right. It's, yeah. And speaking of um, speaking of V3, that's like a lot, a lot of the vibe I got from their interaction. It was very V3 Rider Man, uh -huh. very antagonist with each other. They they were working for the same goal, working for the same aims, but not quite the same method yeah, the same like, ways. You know, if Ultraman Gaia. Is the protector of Earth, Ultraman Agul? If I'm saying that correctly, am I saying that right? The who? I, I say Agul. So. Yeah, Agul. Um, he's like Gaia, where he wants to protect the Earth, but he will sit there and say he will pull some Batman. I'll sacrifice some folks if it means the Earth is being protected, and that butts their heads <laughs> for a good lot. half. The right. first half of the series is literally both of them beefing back and forth. Until they finally, you know, do the Ryu, kit, Ryu Cyclops handshake, and they're like, "All right, I guess you know we got team." Literally, they literally. <laughs> he's not joking. They literally did the Ryu Cyclops handshake. Oh, um, <laughs> but the first half is dope. Seeing them really like butt heads on like their sensibilities of like their goals in a way. 
and I and I like a lot of the the effort they put into showing Agul's like origin, like why he got the outlook that he did. Um, and it's kind of fucked up that you know, like you say, he's for the earth, and he's like humans be damned. That's like his yeah. whole thing is like I don't give a shit. Like, and I I, I really like stories like that. Um, especially like when they do it in G Gundam when it's like, I'll have to save the earth. You know, the humans don't matter. I'm like, motherfucker, we are also of the earth. Like, we, we <laughs> came like, here too. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you saying, dog? <laughs> it's like, what are we doing here? Why are you doing this? Like, come on, dog. Like, you know, so yeah, it, it's, yeah, but like, like that was something to me that I actually enjoyed a lot was like, this whole idea of like Ultraman Gaia and the conflict between them and stuff. I would say, and then I would say at times the show, at least to me, it did, I'm not gonna say preachy, it did get a little heavy handed on like the whole idea of like on some Captain Planet stuff, but just way more heavy handed at times. Um, I don't know, man. You gotta you gotta be extra hard to be more heavy handed than Captain Planet. I would say, I would say, I would say it, it used metaphor and allegory a little, employed that a little better than Captain Planet would. Have. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was the only reason why I say heavy handed because it's like, okay, I get it, you know, protect the Earth, yada yada yada. But it's like, all right, you you nailed it. But it's like, man, how many times are you gonna preach to me on this before I'm like, all right, man, I'm getting kind of tired of you preaching to me on this shit, like. The first two, first five times, I'm like, all right, cool, I like this. And then the sixth time, I'm like, all right, man, you're gonna have to switch up a have, little bit on this. Have Ted Turner show me your house dressed up as Gaia. Did you listen yet, boy? <laughs> Stop um, polluting. Oh, man. But um, I think, as we said earlier, this was. I think we said this multiple times with with Ultraman, like the history of Ultraman and timelines. It has, I don't, well, I actually, I never said this specifically like this. It gives off very Zelda in a sense, right? Because you know Zelda's timeline is just like sporadic as shit, even though they're interconnected in a way. That's how I feel. That's how I feel Ultraman to me. To me, I mean, you might you might disagree. I wouldn't say that because because Nintendo tells us that all the Zelda games take place on one timeline. It's just they're so spread out in time, like it's hundreds of thousands of years in between them, or whatever, right? Yeah. But I say like Ultraman deals with it like a, a comic book multiverse, where like there are different Earths and you can travel between the different Earths, and there are some things that are different. Yeah, uh, there are some things that are same. There are some series that take place concurrently, and there are some that stand off on its own. If anything, it also might be a little more kind of like how Godzilla does it. Yeah, the show uh, the, the that era and stuff, but they've recognized their history. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, well, I was, I was also thinking more like there are, there are some timeline tracks that follow, then there are some that break off, and there are some that are isolated. And have you seen that crazy ass Godzilla timeline? It's fucking dope. <laughs> it's a very, it's one of those bizarre timelines where you're like, all right, cool. That that works. That that totally works and stuff. Um, this yeah, is also I like another... to like. Okay. Okay. I was, yeah, like I said, I look at it more like it's the it's like the DC multiverse. Where it was like there's like Earth One, there's Earth Two, and there's a Superman yeah. on that Earth, but there's slightly different on this Earth. You know, you know, sort of like that. Well, I'm sorry. Or yeah. or oh. like like that map of the multiverse that Grant Morrison drew, where like there's this the center of the universe is like. The new guy. I'm finna go in the weeds. Stop me. Let me shut. Let me stop. Let me stop. Yeah. Let me stop. But anyways, um, this is also the first time that uh, we had the support team. You know, the defense team of the of the Earth. Um, they got like a full fucking corporation this time around. It's not like oh, it's only like eight people, and that's bro. They got like a full fucking corporation. Land, sea, and air squads. We fucking GI Joe in this bitch. <laughs> Dog. No, I was expecting Sergeant uh, Japan Sergeant Slaughter to pop up as part of the support team at this stage. I was like, bro, like, how many people do you got on this fucking team? I'm not mad at it. It's actually pretty dope. But, like, whoa, this is a lot that they are working with here. I was going to say, they already got Sergeant Slaughter here. What's an Abe? Oh, yeah, you know what? You're right. You know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> the Chad himself. And, 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 and Dig, they're, they're team, different teams. So you have Team Lightning, you have Team Falcon. Team Crow, Team Hercules, Team Seagull, and Team Marlin. That that's a lot. That is a lot of teams that we got going on here. And that's they a lot had, of people you had Unique vehicles, right? And you know that they were, they really are all in the same fucking episode, right? 
No, nah, they're, they're not. It's it's. I mean, they were definitely maneuvering. Specialized, <laughs> specialized teams doing specialized teams. Kind of remind me of uh, Gridman a little bit with the vehicles. That's true. Yeah. Or or Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. Yes. I would. You know what? I would say. I would say out of all the Ultraman, because like Ultraman, the, the defense teams all have that Thunderbirds feel to it. I feel like this one has the strongest Thunderbirds feel. Oh, dude! Look, look. especially with that sky base. Look, I think Thunderbirds is one of those shows that, like, if you have a big imagination as a kid, that show hits you like, oh, my God, I love this fucking shit, you know, and stuff. And I know for some other people, they look at Thunderbirds like, that's weird. I'm like, no, it ain't. I like this shit. So I think that's also the reason why, like, Ultraman appeals to me because I'm like, I'm all for these support teams and their vehicles because if I was a kid, I want all those toys immediately. Right, (laughs) right, right. It's like I need so that. I, I'm wondering. Look, see, after the show, I might go online and be like, "Let me see if they got any Ultraman Gaia toys." To see, check <laughs> the rocket, my man. Check Ame Ame. It's like how many they got right here and stuff. Um, but like I said, the first half of the series is basically them, you know, Gaia and Azul button heads and stuff, and the defense team being there, kind of in the middle of all of it. And then the second half is basically them saying, "Hey, you know what? Let's put aside our differences and just." Destroy these kaiju's, you know, and do what we do best: beat the shit out of kaiju's, as as all Ultraman do. And you know what? I'm good with that. I like it. <laughs> right. And so, um, the story of Ultraman God takes place in the year 2000. Was it 2000? 2001. 2001. 2000. Okay. Yeah, 2001. And so, there is a supercomputer developed by this group called Alchemy Stars. Uh-huh. Which is essentially a collective network of genius children, all born, and I think was it they said the eighties, because they're, they're all born like, in yeah. the, born the early eighties and yeah, born in the early eighties, yeah, and so they are a bunch of uh, a network of uh, a brain trust, a bunch of super genius babies, a and British so, organization at that, by the way. <laughs> the British always fucking up shit. Uh, so they, uh, yeah, so they really are. call crisis that predicts that the world will be annihilated by an unknown creature called the Radical Destruction Bringer. So, um, Zig, am I saying it right? Zig, X-I-G? Yeah, Zig. Yeah, Zig. Zig is founded. I say Zig, Zig. Zig. It's awesome. That's fair. Zig, that's fair. That's fair. It works. That's fair. Um, it's founded, and they develop um, Guard as a national organization to defend the Earth from creatures sent by the radical destruction being via wormholes. And they have their flying sky base. I was about to say helicarrier. They have their sky fortress called the area base. And that's our basic setup I mean, for this, Ultraman Gaia. I mean, it's technically their helicarrier, so I mean, it's a, not it's, necessarily, it's a, you know. I mean, shield, guard, what's the difference? And so, um, uh, Gamu is our Ultraman. He's a 20-year-old scientist and he's a member of the Alchemy, Alchemy Stars. And why fucking around and it was it a different Brenton tank? He was doing some virtual reality shit? Yeah, it was a different he, uh, tank. He was guy. doing... Was... Uh-huh. Oh, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just confirming what you were saying. Deprivation tank. tank. <laughs> right. He sees Gaia and then he later emerges with him to uh, defend the Earth from the monsters um, being sent. Now, when Ultraman God was in production, and y'all are going to forgive me because I'm going 100% off memory, um, one of the producers from Tiga, and I forget his name, thought that he was done working on Ultraman. And they came to him, and he said he had the idea that the basic premise was that instead of having an Ultraman come from space, they wanted an Ultraman who was born from Earth, um, a human Ultraman. Because that's a that's an entirely um, different dynamic than what we would normally normally have. Because normally it's either the Ultraman in a flesh suit pretending to be a human, or it's a human bonded with the Ultraman. So they were already on, and the Ultraman is already established, and they become one with another human. But this is like um, the definitive. The Ultraman starts on Earth and grows and learns, and is an Ultraman on Earth, and the perspective of how being a human shapes the Ultraman that he will become. Yeah. I think I got that right? Please check behind no, me. No, it's, it's, it's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it, essentially. <laughs> right. And so, a lot of that 
um, then becomes kind of like the core of the show is Gamu and his experiences as Ultraman. And then it go, falls along the times of the tagline, which was, um, I think it was, are you a messenger of the devil or are you a hero of justice? I think that was the tagline in Japan, I believe. And so they do yeah. a lot of experimenting about <clears throat> what does it mean what about what does it mean to be a human? What does it mean to be a human Ultraman? Like, so a lot of that is what the show um, works on and hinges on. And so mm -hmm. the thing that the, the writer really enjoyed, and damn, I'm trying to remember his name. Um, the thing that he really liked was that being the main writer from Tika, he liked that a lot of the subplots were dealing with a lot of drama. So it was a lot of interpersonal drama. Um, especially mm -hmm. in like Agul's story. Like, I think, like I said, yeah. Agul's story is like done really well across the episodes that he's in. Um, some really great character work is putting him and showing his motivations. Why does he think that he does? Why does he do the things that he does? I mean, whether cause, you, cause to whether me, you agree like, with it or not. I mean, because to me, like the fact that a, <laughs> I'm just going to say this, um, might as well say uh, Ultron, aka Crisis, is the one that's like, hey, dude. Um, yeah, uh, there's going to be total destruction of Earth, and every time he has a vision, he just pain, right? And then right. all of a sudden, he sees the blue and silver giant towering over all that destruction, and basically, Crisis is telling him, "Oh yeah, the cause of this is mankind," and that kind of is what why a ghoul, right. well, Fujiyama, kind of has that antagonist of like, "All right, I'll save the Earth if it's at the expense of mankind," because right, of that vision. he kept running the simulations. He was like, "I can what's." What can save the earth? What can save the earth? And he did the calculation was like remove humans from the equation. It's like, oh, it's a 99% chance we survive. Really, yeah. bro. Really, bro. <laughs> and I also like that to... fucking reveal. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I'm gonna say you go, you gonna trust what uh Blippy says on the computer there, bro. You gonna trust uh your Napster. Trust AI son. AI really, son? What? <laughs> really? Oh, so conveniently the AI says everything to be great if there's no humans. Really? We gonna we gonna believe that. I know a, I know Skynet when I see it. All right, come on now. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, game recognizes game, but <laughs> we know we know what the deal is here. And I also like that fucking reveal when the computer was revealed to be a bad guy, and I was like, wait a second, why is it uploading itself? <laughs> Prom. I sat back and I was like, who would have thought a computer goes evil? Where have I seen this before? Like, wow, the computer that said kill all humans <laughs> is actually evil. You don't say. It's like being surprised Brainiac hates humans. I'm like, nigga, he, he he let Krypton get destroyed. I think that told you where his play was at here. Like, come on. Like, come on, dog. <laughs> but again, done masterfully, though. That's the fucking scene where we're trying to take over the uh, helicarrier base. An old girl with the uh, the 1990s joystick was fighting the virus. Like, <laughs> that's, dude, for sure. <laughs> Because what year did Ultraman, this, this, this came out, with 2000? Was it 2000? Was this 2000? I know it takes place in 2001. Was it 2000? I'm trying to think what year Ultraman, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to remember the year, because when she busted out the controller, I was like, bro, bro. 1998. So, 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 so she busted out a PlayStation controller and just thought, I was like, Nah, bro. Wow. That was a PC joystick, man. That wasn't a PlayStation controller. The fucking hey. knob. I had that knob. <laughs> Either way, it fit the era in a way, and I'm like, wow. And yet, here's the kicker. When, I, when we talk about Ultraman and the years that it came out, like for something that came out in 98, it doesn't, like, I'm not going to, maybe it might be biased, but like, it still doesn't look dated in terms of the fights and all that stuff, just how it looks. Well, this is the last, I think this was the last Ultraman show that was filmed entirely on film. So it looks, it looks fucking great. Yeah. Um, and it was also, it used some of the, at the time, state of the art CG rendering. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> state of the art at the time, but it still worked. At the time. At the time. Yeah, that time uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think this goes a lot to what somebody had asked on Twitter a couple of days ago. Did you see that post of somebody who says they're watching Ultraman Blazar? And yeah, their first Ultraman show, and uh -huh. they're like, "Man, why does this show look so good compared to like Kamen Rider and Super Sentai?" And a lot of people was like, "Well, that's because Super Rider Productions are really good at going more with less. <laughs> they know how to. Uh, they they know how to make. Uh, you know, 
as what the space says, we we took all the worst parts of the pig and made chitlins out of it and stuff. That's that's basically Supro, right? Super Super Iron Productions. They're just like fuck it, right. we're gonna do because right. like you look Blazar. I'm like Blazar looks pretty fucking good. Like goddamn, like I can't tell that they had a budget cut. I really can't. But it's Super Iron because you but you know it's there because it's them. Um, <laughs> and so is there if they're like they're the they are the the masters at their craft. And it would look really fucking odd if the studio founded by one of the godfathers of the genre, if their shows didn't look good, if they didn't utilize some of the techniques and shit that he pioneered. Um, yeah. I mean, like a lot of those model, like a lot of those model works and fights are like really, really fucking good. And I swear, man, that fucking the after the rise scene, that jump they do, I'm not gonna lie, man. I'm a simple dude. I mark that every time. Like so, the little with the, the the rocks in the air and shit, I'm like that is so fucking cool. Gogo V came out the same year as this, right? Oh, we were eating good that year, bro. Gogo V, somebody did a breakdown of the Super Train sequence when it's coming out. Prior, we're in 2023. Why the fuck does that shit still hold up? Because it was done with love and care. Like I'm looking at it, I'm sitting back, just like, okay, I know there's green screen, but I don't fucking care. It's just for some reason that shit just fucking holds up. I'm gonna say, why know. does that shit look better? <laughs> why does that shit look better than spoilers? Spoilers. Cosmic Fury uh, Megazord. The, the Cosmic Fury Megazord um, cameo. Like, I know. I'm gonna say, I know y'all are working with. I know for a fact y'all are working with way more money than Super Ryan. But here's my I thing. I, I think the secret, I is, and the secret is also with 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 with, all, with this. And I'll stick with Ultraman. It's a combination of okay, they're taking people in suits, obviously, right? And they're able to meld it with. Oh no, Bolton is a real person. How dare you? Okay, he's a real person, but like he they're able to meld it, <laughs> they're able to meld it in with whatever special effects that they're using in a way that it just works very seamless. Like it doesn't feel like it's like okay, we're just gonna do all CGI for this, and it's like well, like you you use you use the tools you have. I think I think we talked about this a couple of times. Like you use the tool, like it doesn't. I don't understand people that want to go all CGI, and I don't understand the people that want to go all practical. I'm like you you. You meld it together oh, and it works. You meld it together to create the illusion. <laughs> like that's why that's why shit like Davy Jones looks so fucking good. Or why uh, like you said, the shit like the super train from Go Go Five looks great. Yeah, because you're melding it both because you see what because you see the things that they do. Like he said at one point, like when you see them combined, they had to do smoke effects to hide the shit from the toy. Because they're obviously using the toy for the super train, but the way they do it, it's like, damn, I didn't know that was the fucking toy. I thought this was Oh wow! Like, and I think that's what works for because every Ultraman that we've talked about up to this point, it I'm always just in awe of how much that shit still holds up to me. Great techniques, and if I'm, I need to find it because I used to have it saved, but I think it was the New York, not the New York Times, it was the Washington Post or one of them fucking newspapers. They did a really great article right around the time when Ultraman Ginga was coming out, mm -hmm. and they interviewed a lot of the special effects people. From the behind the scenes, because at the time when the article came out, and I need, I, I promise y'all, I need to find this article. Okay. Um, they were talking about um, there was a deficit because they were losing a lot of people. Like not, not a lot of people were going into the craft that they were doing, so they were losing some recipes because they were yeah. like, running that many apprentices. <laughs> yeah. So they couldn't pass down that knowledge they use of filmmaking to making these fucking shows. Mm -hmm. And um, like one of the guys in the, in the article was just like kind of just really sad. I was like, you know, we do a lot of technique, and they were showing someone behind the scene how they how they shoot to get the perspective, and they were showing some of the, the model painting works that they did. Mm -hmm. Really fucking fantastic article, and I need to fucking find it again. Yeah, if you find it, that that would be that that would be dope as shit because that that was always something to me that like I admire every Ultraman show that we've covered so far. It's just like. I can't really complain because even looking at the '60s Ultraman show that we talked about, like that shit still like, like it appeals to me in a way that I'm still like, yo, I'm glued to this shit. Let me watch this, like, because it just and maybe the Blu-ray does heighten the sense of like, yo, this shit's still fucking good. That could be it too. I'm sorry, like bar for bar, you put up Ultra Q to any show Aaron right now, like that. It, it's it, it, it's it's holding in. It's hanging in there. It's holding up, <laughs> man. Like that's. And that, that's why I said that I think that's also when you go from this to Ultraman Blazar, even watching Ultraman Blazar, I'm like, 
this feels like a 2023 production, but god damn it, this shit still fucking works. Like the, the old styles that they're doing, it still fucking holds up. Like, damn, like like did you see that fight from last week when they when he fought that kaiju in the air? Um uh, and again, because I know how the size I, 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 I had to hold myself from marking out at that shit. I'm like God damn, like yo, <laughs> like I know how the Sasha's is made, so I can see some of the some of the creative magic they were doing, like a lot of the extreme close-ups and shit. Yeah. But the fact that they they staged it and they tried that just uh, that just meant the world to me. Like they they care <laughs> and then they, they want to make put forth the best product as much as possible. It's it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know, and I think that's that's the great thing about this show. Oh, is that because even when the you know the special effects gets dodgy, the show was already good enough to where you can excuse the dodgy right. stuff. And I've always told that to folks. It's like, look, nobody is ever going to excuse you know bad special effects. I just think if your product is good, people can you don't deal mind with you don't some, mind you don't mind it you don't mind it being like you know a bit shoddy in certain certain parts because it's like all right, cool. It's you know what it's kind of like the first season of Flash, right? Like. We knew that when they blew the budget for that show, right? Especially in the early seasons, but we still enjoyed it because the product was so fucking good. It's like I don't give a shit. They spent money on Gorilla City. I still enjoyed the show, you know. And right. that, that's that's the beauty of those those kind of things. And that's the thing. Like a lot of the people who get so hung up on VX, V uh, special effects, I'm really concerned for them because they think like, oh, if you put all the money and we get like a Hollywood budget and do X, Y, and Z, that's going to improve the product. I'm like, if the writing is still fucking piss poor. It's still gonna be piss poor when you give them all Special the money to make don't mean CGI shit. effects. That don't mean shit. Like you can excuse like dodgy special effects if the if the story is good, if the characters are well fleshed out and believable. Like you will let a lot of shit slide. Like I was watching, um, I think have I said this? I, I watched it's the, the Netflix Gamera show, right? Yeah. Um, the CGI in that show is fucking terrible. Dog shit. Like it's a twenty <laughs> frames per second. Looks awful. It's competent, I, I but watched, yeah, yeah. Right. I watched every episode because the character writing and the story was so engaging. I watched. Oh yeah, episode. it's great. It's great. I love it. <laughs> right. It's a good. Ooh, is that show so good? Um, I watched one episode of Castlevania Nocturne, and I am not watching another one <laughs> because the, not only is the animation is pretty dog shit, um. The character I, writing in it mm, is atrocious. It is so bad. We might disagree. Look, look, I might do a castle. I actually want to do a Castlevania episode because we really got to delve into that because I really am trying to understand it because I think I watched that whole season. I was like, oh, it's fine. Like that, but I'm really trying to like, like for me personally, I'm always trying to gain an understanding of the other side of the viewpoint when people have legit critique on certain things. Right. So it's like, it's kind of like when we talk, when we talk about certain comic writer seasons, like I might enjoy it, but somebody be like, "Oh, I hate that comic writer season." Like they might hate the Ultraman season. I'm like, "Well, I enjoyed it, but let me get an understanding of why this person didn't like it." And then it's like, "Okay, I totally understand. Got you." Mm-hmm. You know, so right. I need to really understand the Castlevania thing. I'm like, "Let me see. Let me let me get an understanding of this." <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm not watching it. That show was just bad. I know. I know. I know. I know. I, hey, look, I get it. Trust you me. Know, you have a you line, and I respect it. If you if if you really want to do an episode. I will force myself to watch it. But my thing with that is like, I am not the biggest. I'm like, look, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, I, I know 10, 10 toes down on everything about Castlevania. I am a casual Castlevania fan. Uh, yeah. I played a lot of the games. Obviously, I played the original. Obviously, I played two. Obviously, I played Super. I played Rondo Blood, Knight, all that. Yeah. Rondo Blood. I played the, the advanced games with Soma on the GBA, with some of the best games I've ever played. I, I haven't Divinity finished Sense. yet. I played the um the reboot. I thought that was really fun, even though it was like a God of War like. I thought that was great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, like, I like the story. I like the mythology. That's I think that's more where I lean for. Like I like the story. Yeah, of the, mytho- yeah the, the, the mythology of it, like Dracula, really and just the whole history, right. and you know Alucard and all that stuff. Uh, this show I think does a really bad job of the, like the parts that make Castlevania Castlevania does a really terrible job at relating it, uh, doing it. Yeah. And um. I just don't like the writing. And again, please, 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 please don't ever let me yuck your yum. When I am speaking, I am speaking um, for myself. I'm using I statements. I'm always using I statements. If you think the Castlevania anime is the greatest video game adaptation of all time, number one, how? 
Uh, but number two, I mean, look, look, the bar is a hell prop, so it does leap over that to a degree. If we're going to be real, if we're going to be real, it does <laughs> in a way. I'm gonna be 100 honest with you, man. I will put the fucking Legend of Zelda Super Mario Brothers mm -hmm. 20 places before this shit. I, I, dog. I don't know, man. Like, it, nah, it, it, dog. I, nah, look, it, nah, uh, nah. Mm. nope. Mm. All right, all right, but no. Let's get let's get back to Ultraman because I don't want to make this a Castlevania show. Um, you know when we talk about you know dickhole villains and stuff. Um, so radical destruction bringer. So you're a universal protector, but you purposely send kaiju's down to, to rain destruction. On Earth. And I'm like, right, right. how are you the universal protector again? Like, how does this? Work? I like his, I like his go to flunkies. Those those metal monsters. Yeah, <laughs> him. Those are his ride or die, bro. They were like, they were down for whatever, man. No, it just, I don't, dude. This is what, like, look. That stuff always got to me. It's like you're the universal protector in name, so you're thinking, okay, maybe he might be like the fucking animus from Wild Force, where he's doing some shit to test the Earth, right? And it's like, no, you're not really like the no. universal protector. No, you just rain destruction down just cause, like. I, I want them niggas dead. I want them wiped off the face of the earth. I want the house burnt to the ground. I want to go there at night and piss on the ashes. It's like, bro, like that, that's not a universal protector here. You're, what, do you, what universe are you protecting? Depends on your perspective, sir. You humans suck. <laughs> that's also Galactus. Yeah, I eat, I eat Earths in order to protect the universe. How, how does that work again, sir? Like, you destroy Shut other up, planets. I'm hungry. <laughs> Shut up, I'm hungry. Surfer. Bring me my Dijon mustard. This pen is quite dry. See, this, this is exact. This is exactly why, exactly why, that the fucking ultimate was like, you know what? Just go on ahead and make him the Earth, the person that heals planets instead of eating them. Just fuck that. Like, no, nah, this this isn't working here. <laughs> oh my god, man! Like, no, nah, but you, but no, I. I will always give credit to every Ultraman iteration. They somehow, just when you think that they're not going to give us some new monster designs, they somehow know how to repurpose some monster suits and give you some new designs. You're like, right. son of a bitch, you did it. Did you see that monster? They, um, oh, what was the name of it? But I, like, again, because I know how the Sasha's is made, right? Like, that monster that they repurposed Goza for, I was like, hey, look at this Goza's head and neck piece. Look at that. Look, look if, at you that. Listen, if you listen to our Ultra Q episode, right? I remember watching Ultra Q and I was like, this is where it started right here. This is where they were like, look, we're going to repurpose the fuck out of these suits, whether you like it or not. Like, we had like three different Godzilla suits repurposed in Ultra Q and I was like, I can't be mad at this. It's like, hey, look, if it works, it works. The fuck? Like, <laughs> I mean, do you, dog? I mean, I know y'all got nickels and dimes to rub together. Make that shit work, bro. So it's like, when you look at every Ultraman season, it's like, oh, I know somebody in Super Pro when they get an Ultraman season, like, all right, what can we put on this dude on this monster suit to make it? different do we just throw some new colors on it do we put some more spikes on it they will do we put they a buzz saw on it what do we do they will kit bash together some shit in a hot motherfucking minute man that is the perfect name for that kit bash we are kit bash these country suits don't get it twisted Kyle Ryder and Super Sentai will do that shit too this isn't just restricted to Ultraman <laughs> did you just see fuck speaking of you just see in Gachar his new form they took the shoulder pads from that um <laughs> they took the shoulder pads from that um Geo Foz form. No, I didn't see that. I did I need to I need to check that out. I didn't yes. Yes. Hey, look, man, look, I respect it. Look, I, I 100 percent respect that. Like sometimes like, if, you hey. could, if you could repurpose it, that, fuck it. All right, cool. That works. Right, right. <laughs> do what you gotta do. <laughs> uh let me pour one out for camera right gal. <laughs> RIP my suit guy. I mean R. Hey, hey, look. I mean, Yuki looks cool. Yuki looks cool. I'm not saying Yuki isn't cool, but Gal looks cooler. So that is what it is. Yeah. So, you know. Oh, I thought it was something else. I was like, what the hell was that sound? <laughs> um, but nah, that, like I said, the rad radical destruction burger, I was just sitting there like, okay. like, and, and the only thing that took them away is after they fucking took out Zog. They were like, well, I guess we got to stop. Guys, don't we? I guess we got to stop destroying. All right, cool. <laughs> Right, he just like just gave up. He was like, "Well, damn." He was yeah, like, "That's all it. I got." Like, y'all got it. <laughs> y'all good. It's like that's all it took. You took down Zog, and that's it. Like, all right, cool. Like, I was expecting, like, like, I was expecting them, like the actual, like, 
oh, they're going to come down after they defeat Zog, and it's going to be this bit. Oh, we're not getting that. He's like, right. oh, okay. Just close the right. world. I'm like, dude, they, they lost their powers. You can win now. Just go down right down. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> nah, I tap out. You won. <laughs> I'm like, you destroy <laughs> Nah, man, that was my last Yu-Gi-Oh card, man. I can't do shit with that, man. Yeah. I'm def- uh, but, he decked out. <laughs> they decked him out. But here's the kicker. Like, what I liked about it was he was the reason why uh, Agul had that, didn't have faith in humanity because he got one of his, he got Queen Bazaar to basically plant a virus into the crisis computer to basically dupe him into saying, hey, fuck humanity. We got... <laughs> We, we, I'm going to protect the Earth, but I'm going to take out humanity, which was kind of sort of doing the bringer's job in a way. Like, all right, take out humanity at all costs. And then once he regained faith, the bringer was like, okay, I'm going to try to manipulate you again, but the death bringer didn't work. And then it's like, all right, well, I guess I got to tap out after this because this isn't working anymore. And I'm like, okay, that that that's cool. <laughs> I wish it was a little bit more bang for my buck at the end, but all right, cool. So, you know. Um, so in your notes, Prime, did you have any sort of uh, moments that you enjoyed out of the show? Uh, if I – we'd be here all night. Uh, so let's just talk about well, – top, top three, but top, yeah, highlights. Just, just highlights. Okay. So top three. So that episode where they really went, let's talk about those Japanese war crimes. <laughs> As they always do. I mean, they, they fucking went there. I said, oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Both of it's like alert. T- the Japanese were the run the good guys doing World War II guys. They were they not. Were, they were not doing good things then. They were not. This show said, "Let's let's talk about this with our whole ass chest right now." I mean, look, yeah, yeah, uh, like, yeah. It's like, like we really know that. Friendly show. <laughs> Just don't look up Japanese World War II human experimentation. You will not like the results. You will not like what you see. <laughs> um. I would say the best moment, and it was one of those things where it's like this feels very Ultraman. Is they lost their powers and they pulled the DBZ, uh, you know, the, 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 the spirit bomb where they all pull the resources, even from the kaiju, to help the Ultraman stay. I was like, you know what? I like this. This right. is this is this is peak Ultraman right here. Like, let's now, got you. <laughs> do you think Tiga did that better? Or do you think Gaia did that better? My bias says Tiga. You know, I was gonna say I was gonna say the same thing, but like now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know. It's hard. It's like picking between your two favorite kids. Like, like they both did it in ways that's fine. Like it works. Right. So I can't really pick between them. It's like all right, right, know. right. Like I really love the fact in God that they they included the monsters because the monsters too are of Earth and they also have the the right to be there. Um, well, yeah, because I think it was like the the statement was the kaiju have a right because this is the date of, this is the planet of their this birth. is their planet too. Yeah, I was like, like, oh, shit, here. like that's that's deep. Right. I ain't gonna lie, I mean, it ain't deep, deep, but it's like that, that that's actually that's fact true. here. So that's where yeah, the lies. Yeah. <laughs> no lies detected there. But I'm also a fucking sucker because like that fucking scene where the children of the earth recreate Tiga, like that shit. I watched that scene to make sure I still have a soul. <laughs> like, that doesn't affect you. It's like I don't the Grinch, like your heart rules like 10 times. <laughs> right. Like, that is like, oh, it's so fucking good. Like, I think that's the one, th- the one thing that was impactful to me, at least, that I actually don't like about the show. And I think a later Ultraman shows do this. is like, they show the fact that the kaiju aren't just mindless beasts. Like, they actually are functioning creatures that actually have a layer of, like, intelligence you know, beyond just, ah, monsters destroy an earth, that it's like, no, then that's fundamentally why that, like, that scene with them powering the Ultraman works, it's like, no, they have a layer of sentience to where they're, they're, they're living beings, too. Mm-hmm. So, that, that's what makes it work, and that's, that's why a later Ultraman series really made that a point to really show that, and it isn't just guy in suit beating the shit out of a monster that's just, you know, doing whatever and stuff so i actually thought that was actually pretty great so um but yeah that that was definitely the highlight for me um what's your other highlight that you got um the episode where the dude who was a traitor to alchemy stars and he had his bootleg uh zeton form i mean bootleg, yeah. his bootleg zeton. I, 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 look you, you gonna have me disagree with you i'm not <laughs> 
fucking the boot, bootlegs that time. I thought that was a really fucking strong episode. Mm-hmm. Um, also brought back old girl that speak that spoke English, the blonde haired chick. Uh-huh. Was she Canadian? What the fuck? Or no, they met her in Canada. And her, what was her, what was her story again? They met her. And she was her dad. Her mom and dad died to that monster, and she had to realize that the monster was also protecting its children. That was also a good episode mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, um, I know for me, like the the the, the four or five episode run where a ghoul is starting to change up his mind, like you kind of you basically see kind of like the char- his character changing up at that point. And I actually thought that that was actually a good four or five episodes of really seeing that change because they could have easily made it like an episode or two if they wanted to, but they're like, no, we're going to show you his progression of really where his mind changed up on humanity. And it actually makes it way more impactful when you actually see it that way. So I'm actually glad that they actually went about it that way instead of just like two episodes and, oh, he's a good guy now and that's it. Which, right. I mean, I, I would have been fine with it, but just to see the character progression was actually pretty great for me. Right, because the character is always front and forward in this show. And behind that, my third top favorite thing, and these things aren't in order, yeah. Um but the episode where they actually fought, where they escalated, where they were first, they were human sized on the aerial base, mm-hmm. and then uh, they were trying to sabotage the base. I thought that that whole string episodes are like really good. Um, was that also the part where the captain found out that uh, Gamu was Ultraman? Yeah, I think that was, I want to say episode that was episode 20, 20s, wasn't it? 26. 26 is the one where the captain found out that he was Thank Gaia. You. Yeah, 26. And the captain is a straight G because he didn't tell no fucking body. He didn't I mean, if you're the captain of a squad, I mean, the smart thing is to keep that shit to your chest because you ain't trying. Like, look, you're. He didn't this, blow a spot up. Because my thing is this this isn't like the previous, like we said before, this isn't like the previous Ultraman where it's like six people on a team, right? Like, this is a whole ass fucking corporation. Organization. And- organization. Right. You know, they're on salary and all that shit. So it's like, you can't just tell the whole fucking organization. That's a lot of fucking people that that know. And it just, it, 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 I would figure that would change the dynamics a lot in terms of how right. the organization is ran. So the fact that, like you said, he was a G and just kept this shit to himself. Like, you know what? I'm not going to say shit. Let me just right. table it. Right. And he was so good with that shit. Like, bro, I forgot he knew. <laughs> like, he kept that shit so to the chat. I forgot he knew he was Ultraman. So, like, he... He said some shit, and I was like, "Oh wait, that's right. He did find out." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No, look, I'm, those are instances that I love. Those kind of things where, because usually previous Ultraman, the team never really finds out until what, like the second to last like episode, more couple of last episodes. Or if you were, or if you dope like Rena from uh, Tika, you figure that shit out. And you start fucking with Daigo, like. Sure, would like, be nice if Ultraman was here. Episode two, she's already fucking with him. He's like, "What are you talking about, Tika?" He's like, "Oh about? man, Tika." Be, Who's he nice he was here. Yeah, wouldn't it be Daigo? And look, that nigga dead in his eye. Wouldn't that be great, Daigo? Wouldn't it? Just looking at her with the, 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 the Diddy and the old dude gif where they stared at each other like... Right. He's like, I don't recall. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, what do, I don't, what do you I don't, mean? I don't have a recollection of that. What are you talking about? What do you mean? What? Huh? <laughs> Cucumber must say it's better pickled. Huh? <laughs> Oh my god, man! Like that, that and um, like a lot of like for me, like the best episodes that I enjoyed was just the characterizations of. Actually, again, this is depressing. Oh boy, as a ghoul having dep- having suicidal thoughts. Like I know that's the depressing thing to say. As like that's your favorite. It's like that's something that it was well written. It was well handled. Because it's because it's not like it, it's it's not the typical like. Oh, I had I was duped into losing faith in humanity. Sad boy, sad boy. It's like no, this is legit. Like he has suicidal thoughts from that shit. Like because it really killed whatever notion that he had before. And his past just what was I fighting for? Now it's like, well, fuck. Am I worthy of being the Ultraman now after all this shit? Right. Like his fucking his fucking pet bunny died. His um his <laughs> sensei that chick she got murked. Bro, they they threw everything in the kitchen sink at just every. I'm like, bro, you have the Worst luck, like holy shit, like. <laughs> but to say who who had it worse? Who had it worse? Uh, him or Gills from Agito? Who had the worst life? I mean, is, is that a trick question, sir? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, 
I would say Ajito, but I, I mean, then the I would question, say, like, who who had? <laughs> oh, you bet. I would say I would say Agul because at least that that cat or whatever would get yeah, cat, did, did, yeah, yeah, he didn't get murdered. The guy Agul just got it all. It was like everything you touched, death. And I'm like, <laughs> God damn, it, like, God, like God, fuck, bro. <laughs> oh man. Oh, go ahead. I was like, can I get? Can I get? No, you nah, you don't nah. go to PetSmart. You get nothing. <laughs> you get statness, sir. Stuff oh up. man, Gabu versus Gabu was actually pretty dope. I think that was like in the. Four, I think it was like was that forty two or forty three? I think oh, it was when the the metal flunkies came back. Right. And it was <laughs> guy. I'm telling them dudes to ride or die, man. <laughs> them dudes are dope as fuck. That is that is a character that is like, nah, we're just gonna this this is what you're gonna get. Deal with it. Like, all right, cool. Like, I'm, I'm all for that. I am all for I also that. Like, I also like that this shit happened immediately after he got the powered up form. So it's like, <laughs> we still got this old suit, right? I mean, we can still do shit with it, right? Hey, look, man, I'm I'm always for like the again, suit reviews, just all that. I'm all for it. Just like just just keep that going and just go from there. So like I, I would just say this. We ain't gonna dive into it too deeply. I think we did a good job of giving people some information of it. I think you should definitely watch it. All the episodes is on YouTube, shockingly enough. They're all on YouTube, on, subbed and everything. And on Pluto in Tubi. God bless them. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, this is on DVD too. I need to get it on DVD, actually. Tokusatsu, I have it on DVD. Yeah, I need to get it on DVD. I, that's that's I'm I'm slowly but surely like building up the Ultraman library and stuff. Just like I got all the Super Sentai, I'm like I need to build this up and keep it going. I still owe y'all that picture, don't I? Yeah, you kind of do a little bit. I said I'm gonna take the picture. I'll take that picture. Okay. <laughs> don't let me forget. I mean, you know, just hey, look, look, I, I, I look, I, I my Black RX finally came in, and I'm like, I might have to binge that show because I, I love these. Black Did you RX. see? Did you see my uh, my Instagram post where no, I tagged I I, everybody? I need to go back and see it because, like, yeah, yeah, I posted my the camera rider DVDs and I tagged everybody. I was like, I need to go back because I think I didn't, I think I didn't notice it, but I need to go back and look at it because, like, yeah, that Black RX came and I was like, yes, yes, we need to do Black RX. Hey, Matt, yo, yo, shout out to Matt Chocolate. He, Sue Pro said you're gonna get, you're gonna like this Ultraman shit. I'm like, yep. <laughs> You're damn right. The Ultraman agenda is real. Ask me about the Ultraman agenda. <laughs> it's like, nah, you're going to get this shit whether you like it or not. Deal with it. <laughs> did you see the, um, the shit they did for Blazar at New York Comic Con? Did you go to any of that? Yeah, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I saw all the stuff that they had set up for Blazar on the floor and I took pictures, but I didn't go to any of the panels. What, what, was there something else that I missed? Yeah, they did a panel. They did like a, you know, those stage shows they do in Japan and on the Ultraman. They did that in New York? Yeah. They did, did it in New York at the Blazar oh, stage show. Uh, they also did a photo shoot where he's walking around Times Square in the suit and shit. Look, oh like my god, dog! Like, yo, how? Did, I'm so mad at myself for that. I'm so mad. I guess Super Pro, they, they really just like you, you Ultraman. He, like, look, that Netflix show. We that you know what? Prime next episode, we might have to talk about the whole. We might have to do season two and three of this show. And, and talk. We about gonna have to. Stuff. We got to because that because you were 100 right. The way that show ended, I was like, this is actually pretty fucking good. I was not, I had zero expectations of the way the show was gonna end. I'm like, this is actually pretty fucking good. I ain't gonna lie. That shit, that last episode was peak, bro. That shit was fucking peak. Like, I'm gonna need like the idea that it didn't end like the manga went out my head immediately. I was like, you know what? I, I can take this. I love this. This is actually bro, great. Bro, bro, seven human-sized Ultraman fighting a giant Zeton. Take my Fucking money. Let's go. Oh, oh no. This has to be put up. <laughs> Damn, Supro really did just put the dick on the table sick common. Bro, dog, dog. What you say? They stared. <laughs> look, they stared Hasbro straight in their face and says, This is how you do a property. <laughs> they really did. Like, I ain't even go, like, I can't even knock common writer because. Look, that's that's Toei. Toei's gonna be to- Toei, so you yeah, Toei gonna Toei. So you just accept it, just like we accept Bandai. So it's like we're gonna critique them, but fuck it. At least they're at least trying to do something, right? But Hasbro, nah, they. I would say that's more so on Hasbro than Common. They're like, bam, Power Rangers. What? We got stage plays. <laughs> Hasbro's like, bro, we just run the contract out. We do not give a fuck. We we do not give a fuck. We do not give a fuck. Yeah. 
Look, as fucking pro military as this fucking country is, man, light speed rescue would really fucking jerk people off in excitement. A military power rangers, are you fucking kidding me? People would eat that shit up. I'm that's, a, I'm that's, a, that's, that is money on the table right there. Like, come on, man. Like, what are we doing here? Like, come on. And again, I uh, think our ball is in hell. <laughs> it really because, is, man. <laughs> because, like, I just want the show to be good. <laughs> like, that's all I want, man. Like, I'm really like, sick. I don't. I don't want that, and I don't want that asterisk mark like good for Power Rangers because that's another thing I hear when people talk about Constant Fury. They go, "Oh, this is good for Power Rangers." No, 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 it's just a good show. Prime, the fact that a lot of us are sitting there looking at Operation Overdrive, like, perhaps I was too too harsh to you. I was like, maybe we were harsh to Operation Overdrive. <laughs> Did you see me a couple of weeks ago when I was sitting there looking at Dino Fury and I was like, you know what I really liked about tattooed teenage <laughs> alien fighters? <laughs> Look, Prime, that's a bridge too far, but you have some points on that. I was like, okay, I'm not going to sit there and say tattooed teenage alien fighters. It's like, Primo content, but you know what? I, I, I can admire. I, I can. I, like, I can admire what they were going for here. I can see the vision. I didn't here. say that. I actually, didn't say that, but we said like, that. Actually, we did say in the like, episode. We saw. Vision. Yeah, we saw. We did talk about it in the tattoo teenage alien fight episode. You should re listen to that post. We did as much as we were giving a shit. We was like, you know what? I see the vision. I see the fucking vision. It was I there. See what they were trying to do. It's like sitting here watching down a few hours. Like. You know, the one thing I really appreciate is that the characters had fucking personality. You know what I mean? Like, those four dudes, they did not like each other, right? And yeah. they no, they did not like each other. And that created, like, a sense of drama in the show and a sense of, a sense of conflict. By the end, they were like, oh, they're friends. Personalities. Cool. Right. Cool. They were like, these are four unique personalities. They want four different things. So they're always fucking clashing. There's always conflict. They're mm-hmm. always arguing. They're always, like, they showed Character. character. I respect <laughs> that. <laughs> like, I like that. <laughs> you see what they've done to me, CJ? You see where I'm at, CJ? <laughs> they had me speaking positively about yeah, tattoo yeah. teenage. You yeah, know I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that if that new look, and it's not like I, pred- I want to predict, you know, doom and gloom, but I swear to God, if that new Power Ranger show comes out and it's mid as fuck, I'm going to look at Ninja Steel like, perhaps I was too harsh to you, Ninja Steel. Perhaps. No, no. Perhaps. I'm already there. I was watching the divisions in danger the other day, and I was like, you know what? You know what? Maybe we were too harsh on that episode. You know, they tried. They tried. Active deck. They did cool fight you know, scenes here. You know, you know what? That is the tagline for Digital Steel. Well, you know, they tried. They tried. <laughs> they put the best foot forward. Intentions were made. <laughs> it's tragic. <laughs> Look where I'm at, CJ. <laughs> Just saying. I end up having me defend Super Mega Force and shit. I'm like, that's with old boy being a fucking homophobe and shit. Like, <laughs> transphobe, my bad. Same thing, either which way. Same he, he a phobe in some way. Yeah, asshole, like, one way or another. Like, fucking asshole. asshole. <laughs> what flavor you, asshole do you want? You had all of us defending you and you being the Troy and shit. Now I'm like, shit, maybe I need to, you know, re- re- redact that. Put some put some black markers on that shit, like nah, nigga. <laughs> as somebody said, as somebody said, the fucking irony that he's a fucking homophobe, or transphobe, and the fact that he was known famous for a character who was super gay for a robot, it's kind of strange, bro. Weird look, dude. Weird fucking look. And, uh, but know, I mean, it's it's go say night, so I, I understand. I, I mean, look, then, then you got pop, then you got Papa John co-signing that shit. And I'm like, as expected. As expected. I mean, as expected. They, <laughs> they are checked off the mark are, right there. <laughs> they are who they say they are. <laughs> Good old Diddy Gray with the line. That was a bar for his ass. Like we are who we are. All right. The fuck you talking about? <laughs> they are who they say they are. Are we really surprised, y'all? Are dude, we really surprised? Dude, as soon as I saw him co-sign, I was like, "Are you surprised, folks? Are you really surprised?" Like he he showed us who we are. Like come on, come on. I mean, we've we've been new. <laughs> yeah, he already showed us the deluxe special with the garlic cheese sauce. We already knew. We already knew. Threw his man's under the bus to take the hit for him. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy, you, you, you approved his wild funds. No, I didn't. 
Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Yo, Bento over the corner, like, man, my shit has nothing compared to you guys. I just stole the banner. That's all I did. <laughs> And everybody forgave me for that shit. And I'm like, you know what? He's right. I mean, it only took a couple of years. And we're like, yeah, Benton, you know, he just did something stupid. Whatever, you know. Right. That was my thing. Why did it take him something? You know what? That's not my cross to bear. That's not my cross. But at the end of the day, you just look at it like, that was fucking stupid. But, you know, we don't hate you anymore. It was just one of those things. It's just like, why? Although, although I will say, you remember when that shit happened? (laughs) Whole lot of people went mask off there, bro. The sizzle was, was oozing out of folks. I'm like, guys, you don't have to be all sizzle on this shit to, to be angry. I'm going to say, hold on, right? dog. <laughs> I'm going to say, hold on, dog. Y'all saying thief with a hard R there. Wait a minute now. <laughs> Yo. That's, these are message, this is message boys days, so that hard R was coming in strong. Like, yo. <laughs> in all languages, subtitled. I was like, bro, like, yo, he did something fucked up. But, I mean, well, not I could say fucked up. It was just like, why? Like, <laughs> why would you do that? Why did he do that? That wasn't even or worth that. Was, that wasn't even worth the hard R. Like, what are we doing here? Like, come on now. Like, they just I, like I swear I feel like they just wait for excuses, bro. That's what it is. I mean, look, it, look. If I see Troy at Power Morphicon, I'm, I'm just gonna look at it from a distance. Like, he's here. It's a thing. Cool. That's it. Just keep, you see keep, people keep calling going. his ass out. You called him man Troy. You see, they call his ass. <laughs> I would forever call him Troy. That's what he was. It's just like, it's Troy. I, I forgot his name. That's how much I'm just like, it's Troy. Yeah, it's cool. Were there like the lines were wrapped around for Captain Marvelous, but nobody wanted to go see his skinny ass? Nick. Now we understand they were, why. They didn't They didn't have to post the pictures. I'm like, come on, man. No, no, no. Look, look. Come look. on, at this, man. At this, point, at, this, at this point, Prime, he, he earned it. Like, hey, look. I mean, hey. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying, <laughs> but did you have to blow them out that hard, dog? Come on, but, man. Let's be, let's be real, Prime. When you do fucked up shit, Twitter gets petty, and I respect the petty. It just, it just is what it is. Receipts are there. Like, I'm sorry. Like, if you do something fucked up, the, like, look, but Papa John did what the fuck you did, and everybody pulled out the receipts. It's like, well, you kind of earned that because, you know, hey. I mean, yeah. Oh, no, this shit right here, I was dog, 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 dog. The fact that money was the only reason why Saban couldn't carry that forward speaks volumes. That man, look, say what you will about Saban. That man had a Bible for that fucking show for two seasons. And the only thing that stopped him was just like, it was just too fucking expensive. And Fox didn't want to put the money behind it. That's it. That's what I keep keep, keep (laughs) thinking about that shit when people keep talking about what Hasbro are going to do. I'm like, if Hasbro is not doing this shit when they are fitting, footing half of the cost, what the fuck y'all think they're gonna do when they gotta do the whole goddamn thing? Bro, what y'all think they, thank you. Like they can look in. I'm look, me, you, and everybody is calling it. They're gonna they're gonna call, come crawling back to Johnny Toey, like, hey, 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 Johnny, can, can we get that Super Sentai? What Super Sentai season you doing right now? Can we can we get that? Can we get that? I don't know, man. It seems a little optimistic. I feel like what they're gonna do is like, oh, we'll just shell off the brand and collect that passive income off t-shirts and pop vinyls. Be blessed now, y'all. <laughs> Nah, they're too lazy even for that because that that would require actually giving a shit prime. You know that. Come on, come on. They they're gonna look. Let's be real. It's cheaper to do the adaptations for what Hasbro puts money into it than actually doing it. And that's for all their talk of oh, but we, the brand needs this. I'm like, but your guys are not putting the effort into it. Like I can give shit. We can give shit to the MCU. Look, say what you will. At least they put money behind it, and now they, you know, it was a lot of money for them to learn the lesson that you need a fucking showrunner to do your shows. But that's a different discussion altogether. But fuck it, I can at least, I can at least say like, all right, fine, fine. Did you see them trying to take that as a victory lap? Going, oh, we we're gonna have showrunners, and all the writers are like, motherfucker, that's what we were striking for. What are you saying? What are you? What? That was a. That was a. You didn't you didn't arrive at this magically, like that's, you, that's what happens when Chapit came over and was like, nah, we don't really need showrunners, just 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 wing it. And I'm like, you can't wing it on these shows. Like you can't you can't treat these shows like movies where you just have a director and that's and it. Producer and a bunch of like yeah. like that's what you, you know, need writers, like, you need writers, guys. Like I, I get what you're doing, I understand the vision, but like that close to was it it was 150 million for each show. Let's just say it was close to fucking a billion at the end of the day for all that shit, right? 
that's a billion dollars right there. And like, I would probably say like maybe 50% of it was worth it. And the other 50% was like, you should have made movies out of that shit and kept it moving and we've been fine for it. But you know, that, that's, that goes back to, like I said, we say it with Hasbro. It's like Hasbro, we talked about it earlier with the, that look, spoilers, the, the Megazord sequence the, the, with, with the, the cause of fury. I was like, what? Bro, a moment, <laughs> what? A moment, a moment where I should be like at the hype, the hype is the moment I should be like, hell yeah, that's the. I just looked at that shit and I went, meh. Because <laughs> like the hardest, eh. I should be hyped for that. And yet, funny thing, how is it that was it uh the Tyson Z movie did that shit better than Cosmic Fury? Or or fucking or superhero chronicle. Where they uh summoned all the Megazords and there were all the fucking toys lined up and <laughs> shot <laughs> You know what? Okay, I'm gonna say this right now. I always go back to Wild Force because that, that was a season that Super Sentai they did it for um for for that for Gal Ranger. That was when they started using CG. And it goes back to the thing of that's why you don't go full CG. You you gotta mix it up. And I think they would have been better for them at them to be like, all right. Just get the toy models and do what they do over in Japan, but again, that requires effort, and they're not going to do it because it's cheap to do CG, and it's like that CG ain't looking so hot, right? And they think that if you use a toy, use a model, it looks cheap. No, it looks it looks worse if it looks like a, a really bad PS One game. It looks. I'm gonna be Bro, honest with you. I, look, even in Once and Always, when they did the Mega Source sequence of the toys, I was like, that I actually kind of like that a little bit, just a little bit. Horrible. That should look. That should look bad. Bro. Not, 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 what the formation or when they come out there separate? Oh, the sequence of them summoning that looked okay. That looked. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That looked I'm fine. Talking actual it's... Megazord. Oh, no, 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 no. The actual Megazord itself. No, it's just I saw the vision when they when when they were doing the whole when they were summoning them. I was like, okay, I see the vision. If they just tighten it up, that could be good. And then it's like that's not matching what you had before. The energy just dived <laughs> big time <laughs> so yeah uh but yeah next episode yeah ultraman netflix season two or three definitely for sure because um yeah that 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 show whew, i love it fucking love shout it shout it out bro shine it out yeah and i'm still reading the manga which is still pretty fucking good so yeah but uh, yeah, thanks for uh, joining in, folks. Thanks for chiming in. Uh, if you got any comments, if you're watching this, if you happen to watch this on YouTube or whatever, shoot us a comment what you thought of Ultraman Guy if you see it. You know, read it on the show. show. Watch um, it. It's good. Watch it. Buy it on DVD. Um, yeah. Are we going to do a separate episode to talk about the movie? Or you want to say a couple of comments? Ooh, kind of- for the Ultraman Guy movie? Yeah, the movie, the... Um- Battle on hyperspace and Gaia again. You know what? No, what? No, wait. Let's do a live commentary on Thank Battle you. on hyperspace. You, you read my mind. I was like, live commentary. I just got to find a day to do it, and then we can just do that, and then boom, we're good to go. So we'll do that. When I that's, find a that's day, one of, that's one yes. of my favorite token movies. Yeah, when we do that, folks, that's gonna be on Twitch. We ain't doing it on YouTube. It's gonna be Twitch because Twitch don't give a shit. So we'd be fine. We'd be great. So yeah, tune in on Twitch when we do that because that's. Last time we did that, we had a lot of people that was watching. We were watching the uh, was the what the brother, the, the four brothers, five brothers, the eight ultra superior ultra eight yeah. brothers. Yeah, we had a lot of people that showed out for watching that with us, and it, it turned out great. So yeah, definitely that's gonna be live commentary. So yeah, next episode is gonna be Netflix Ultraman for sure, and then uh, once I get Ro on board for the Cosmic Fury one, that's gonna be the one after that. And then, um, yeah, they gotta watch. You gotta, can we put that like on a Patreon paywall? Do I do I have to watch this shit? Do I have to? I don't have a Patreon. We don't have a Patreon, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, watch that show. Take, take your time. Take your time. Take, take your time. You know. You know. Get do the cliff notes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll try not to be. I'll try my best to separate the art from the artist. It's gonna be really hard. Um, I mean. I mean, look, it, it took me a minute after watching it. Look, and the thing is, I took a Friday of working and having it on to, like, watch it all the way through to where after letting it marinate, I was like, yeah, that's where I stand at. It's an all right continuation of Down of Fury, not so much on the Power Ranger big bang thing as a whole. So, mm-hmm. 
But hey, it is what it is. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, and we will catch you guys later. Be sure to shoot us a comment if you watch Ultraman Gaia or any comments, really, and we'll read them on the next episode. And um, yeah, that's it. Uh, Vida Zen, dudes. Peace.